Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, today is going to be a very special broadcast. We hope that uh, the singing and the preaching will help you, encourage you, and strengthen you. And also, we have some, uh, some wonderful meetings going on this week as well. We'll tell you more about that here in, the, in just a little moment. But we ask that you would join us in prayer. We're going to go to God and ask Him to bless this program today and also save someone that's watching. Lord, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we are just humbled every day of our lives that we can wake up, we can take a breath, we can take a step, and we can do what we can because we have you in our lives. Lord, we are just so blessed to have friends that pray for us on a regular basis. Lord, we hear from people daily that say that they have evangelistic outreach ministries in their prayer journal. They pray for us every day, pray for strength, for, for health, for safety and travel, for people to be saved. And Lord, that's how we are able to do what we are able to do because of their prayers and because of your spirit. So today I pray that the spirit would come and bless this program, bless the message, bless the songs. And for those that don't know you as their savior, I pray that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit will help them to realize that they need you in their life today and they can make a change in their life. And Lord, for all these things, we'll praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We we'll hope this song is a blessing to you today. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. One day I was walking in a world of sin, no rest for my weary soul. Jesus Christ, I've got the joy, joy, joy in my soul, joy in my heart, joy in my mind, joy since that happy day, joy in my hands, joy in my feet, joy in every way, God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire, now I've got a brand new goal, and since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I've got Joy, joy, joy in my soul. Joy, 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 joy. I got my eyes on Jesus, got my mind made up. I tell it everywhere I go. Ain't nobody gonna turn me around, cause Jesus is in. Since that happy day Joy in my hands Joy in my feet Joy in every way God took those worldly desires Gave me heavenly fire Now I've got a brand new goal And since I met this man Called Jesus Christ I've got the joy, joy, joy in my soul Joy, 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 joy,
joy, joy, joy in my soul. And since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I've got the joy, sweet joy, joy, sweet joy, 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 joy. In Before we get into the message today, I want to let you know about a couple of meetings going on this week. Uh, first of all, I'll be traveling to Sharpless, West Virginia this Thursday night at 7 p.m. at the Monclo Free Will Baptist Church with our dear friend Joe Lane. Looking forward to being able to preach there for my first time. Been privileged to worship there with the wonderful folks, but it'll be my first time preaching there. So I'm looking forward to that this Thursday night at 7 p.m. at the Monclo Free Will Baptist Church. Our dear friends, the Grimmett family, will be singing as well. So it's going to be a great time in the Lord. Please contact us if you need more information. And then also this coming Saturday night, I'll be privileged to be a part of the Determined Youth Conference. The Lord Family Ministries is sponsoring this youth conference. It'll be held at the Plymouth Heights Church of the Nazarene in Franklin Furnace, Ohio. Myself, C.T. Townsend, Darren Lohr, and Scott Hill will be the four preachers for that night. We all have topics that we'll be discussing that, and preaching about uh, teens and the current issues they're facing. It's for ages 13 and up, and we've already heard from hundreds of uh, young people in their youth groups that are coming from all over the tri-state area to be there, and we are inviting you to come. Again, it's ages 13 and up this Saturday night at the Franklin Furnace, Ohio, at the Plymouth High Church of the Nazarene at 7 p.m. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. The Lord family will be singing. And again, it's going to be very unique. A lot of great things are going to be happening. And we need a revival in our country. And I think that it's going to start in the young people, in the hearts of the young people in this area and all around the country. So we're looking forward to this great service this coming Saturday night, the Determined Youth Conference at 7 p.m. So please join us there if you're able to make it. And then also we want to uh, just let you know of a couple of needs that we have uh, coming up this month. Uh, we will be getting into the food basket project every single year. We are just amazed at how the Lord just continues to pour out His blessings on this wonderful project. We're able to help people right here in the Tri-State area that are in need of food, and we are taking donations for that just now. So if you're able to help with that, and you can send in a gift to help it, just mark your memo for the food basket project, and we'll be sure that every penny goes to Feed the Hungry right here in the Appalachian area. Uh, it's just amazing. For example, a gift of $25 can provide a food basket w worth well over $100. And it's amazing to see when these things are delivered how people are blessed just by getting food. And you can never go wrong by giving people food and giving them the Word of God. And that's exactly what we do during this food basket project. So please pray about how you can support the project for this upcoming season. And then also we have a need in Jamaica as well. Many of you have uh, asked us all the time how our different missions and if there's any specific projects we need help in. And we're looking to put on a roof and a, a church down there in Jamaica. Uh, we're looking at $5,000 for this expense. And we'd love to hear from you today because we know that they need that down there. And it would be a great blessing to be able to provide this for the those that are in need there in Jamaica. It's a great ministry opportunity. So please pray and ask God what you can do to help this project. Again, 100% of your giving will go toward this project. Just make sure that you mark it for that and we'll be sure to get to, to those that are in need. Uh, we cannot thank you enough for all that you do for us, your prayers, your financial support. Uh, it's the only way we're able to make it. And it seems like every day of our lives, we're blessed with people that write us, email us, uh, talk to us, and say they have us and they pray for us and, and, and are helping us. And uh, there's just no way we can properly thank you enough. I think only in heaven will, be, will we be able to properly thank you. And we hope today that this message that we're getting ready to get into will be a challenge to you and a blessing to you. And most of all, will give you the determination to walk closer to Jesus Christ because he is coming and we need to be ready. We hope the message will bless you today. He has all power. Why else should we rely on Him? Because His promises are steadfast. It says, which keepeth truth forever. I know you've heard this before, but let me tell you one more time. If He said He's going to do it, He'll do it. 
pastor preached last night. But however, our timing is not God's timing. God's timing, he doesn't operate on a 12-hour clock or a 24-hour for your military time. He don't operate on that. He operates in his own time, in his own way, for his glory. But you know what our problem is? We, we, we go like this all the time. We do. We live in a fast-paced world, in a fast-paced society, and we want everything right now. And we think God owes us something. And so we say, well, God, if I ask for it, then you should give it to me right now. You know what? It would do you good to get things the way you want it for once. Then it would be all turned upside down. You're thinking, God, I should have listened to you. But you this, this is the way I see it. Now, this is, a, this is a little humorous, but you'll understand. We all want our prayers answered like going through McDonald's. We do. We do. We want to pull up. We want to place an order. We want to come up. We want to get our order, and we want to go down the road and enjoy it. But the way God does most of the time, you ever get up to the window and they say, oh, I'm sorry, you ordered fries, but they're not ready yet. And you're going to have to pull up and wait for the fries to be done. That's the way God usually does it with me. He says, Brian, your order isn't ready. <laughs> but you're going to have to pull up and just wait just for a little bit. And you get aggravated, you're thinking, well, if they can't do anything better than this, this would be a good place for a restaurant, you know. But then you wait three or four minutes, seems like an eternity. And then they knock on your window, and then they, you pull in that McDonald's bag, and you get the smell of them fresh, raw, hot, salty French fries. Mm, your mouth's watering right now, isn't it? And you take a bite into one of those hot fries and you know what you say? Time didn't matter because I got something good because I waited. Hey, you know what? You know what God said when we finally get what God receives for us? You know what we say? Thank the Lord I had to wait because waiting is much better. His promises are true. What else did he say? Why do we need to rely on him? Because he provides to those that are in need. The Lord giveth food to the hungry. He provides those that are in need. Let me remind you one more time. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And I'll just kill the meeting right here. If you tithe, you don't have to worry about one thing. You hear me? You hear me? It's a promise from the Word of God. I know some of you don't like you looking at me right now. Oh, here he goes again. Yes, here I go again. I'm telling you, it's proven time and time again. I'm not telling you, give anything one red cent to me. I'm telling you, you tithe to the work of the Lord. You tithe to your church. You do what God tells you to do and commands you to do. And I guarantee you'll never go without. God will provide your need according to His riches and glory. We quote that verse and we shout on it, but do you know why Paul said that? Paul was saying that to the church at Philippi. But do you know why he was telling them that? It's because they were one of the churches that gave to his ministry that provided for him to go out and preach the gospel. And he said, because you were willing to sow into this ministry, God will provide your need according to his riches and glory. I'm telling you what, some of you all, I want to thank you. Every month you, you diligently send a gift to evangelistic outreach. You say, this is all I have. I wish I could give more. I'm telling you what, God will provide your need according to its riches in glory he will provide to those that are in need next we need to trust in him because prisoners are set free he said the Lord looseth the prisoners Abraham Lincoln was called the great emancipator at one time but I got one better than that the songwriter called our Lord and Savior the glorious emancipator I appreciate what Abraham Lincoln done and what role he had in American history and even the world history. But I'm more appreciative of what Jesus Christ did for me. I was walking around 
in a prison with no bars. But thank God I was shackled in chains of sin. But thank God on September the 6th, 1981, on second verses, just as I am, I stepped out as a five-year-old boy and knelt at the middle altar just a few miles from here. And thank God he saved me and set my soul free. We need to be thankful and rejoice and put our trust in him because he can still set the prisoner free. What else does he do? He's a physician to the afflicted. <laughs> it says, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. Aren't you glad he's a healer? We've got a gentleman here from our church tonight. His precious wife called me this afternoon to call through a prayer chain for him. He's been taking radiation treatments. Has to take 44 total for cancer that they found. It was contained. So he praised the Lord for that, but still had to go through 44 radiation treatments, taking them every day, except on the weekends. And so they went to the doctor today, and they stopped the radiation immediately. And so while we were doing some scans, we found that you have a, a, an enlarged uh, a, um, aneurysm in your pelvic area. And it's very dangerous, very serious. And you need to stop this radiation right now and get that taken care of. They're here tonight. And you know what they told me? They said if it wasn't for the cancer, they would have never found the aneurysm. And he said this aneurysm could kill you a lot faster than that cancer will. And he said you better be thankful. And his dear wife Barb looked at him and said, God sent you to us. It's God to take care of this. And the tears came to that doctor's eyes. And he said, I believe you 100%. I tell you, God's got it in control. The Lord's going to heal that. How many of you believe the Lord's going to take care of you? Yes, he is going to take care of you. CD, you keep trusting God. God's going to heal you. Bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to tell you this, and I'll move on. I got to hurry, man. It's, it's, uh, no, I'm good. It's, it's, it's. 7 o'clock in Tennessee in Crossville. So, <laughs> got some Tennessee folks here tonight. I tell this a lot, but i got to tell you for those that haven't heard. My great-grandmother, her name was Thelma Atkins. She was a great Christian, a great hero of mine in the faith. She had faith like nobody else. And she developed a growth in her mouth. And that growth, it was almost positive it was cancer. And it kept growing and growing and and it got to the point where it, it was impeding her to eat. She couldn't eat and swallow because that growth was in the way. And it was becoming just a nuisance and an aggravation to her. And it was becoming dangerous. And so she was at her, at her house there up Beach Fork Hollow out at Otway. She looked up to the hills there in southern Ohio and it was in the fall of the year. She looked up to those trees and the psalm, the psalm that I just quoted a little bit ago came to her. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. She said, Lord, you made these beautiful hills and mountains. And it ain't nothing for you to take care of this growth in my mouth. And she started singing. Jesus, save your pilot me over life's tempestuous sea. And all of a sudden she went... <coughs> She looked down in her hand and she spit out that growth that was inside her mouth. She put it in, put it in a mason jar. <laughs> you know how people love to show off things. <laughs> she went over to her daughter's house and said, Doris, look inside this jar. She said, Mom, that's gross. What is that? She said, that's that growth that was inside my mouth. Look inside my mouth and tell me what you see. And her daughter looked inside her mouth and said, Mom, there's no growth. There's no scar. There's no blood. What happened? She said, I'll tell you what happened. The Lord healed me. The Lord that created it all healed me. He's a physician. He's a physician to the afflicted. Also, he's protection to those that are less fortunate. He says he relieveth the fatherless and widow. And here's what one of my favorites out of all these points. Finally, he'll give punishment to the wicked. Because he said, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. 
You know, that's why we need to rely on him. Because Osama, ISIS, Hamas, the most evil men and women on the face of this earth, the liberal media, I'll just start naming, I could start naming them, but I ain't going to. Crooked Democrats and crooked Republicans. I'll get all of us. Just crooked, evil. Every same-sex couple. And everyone that would stand up for it. I'm not, I'm not done. Every church member, every pastor. Now listen, wait till I'm done. Calvin Ray, Mike Blanton, me, the primitives. Every one that's ever existed will one day bow at the feet of Jesus. The one that reigneth forever and ever. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Every one of us. Every one of us. I, you know what? I hope he lets me. I hope he lets me be there whenever like Hitler or Mussolini or Osama bin Laden or Saddam Hussein or the leader of ISIS, whatever it is. I don't care. I would love to be there when Osama stands in front of God and God says, bow the knee. And his knees will begin to shake. And he'll try every way his best to get out the words, Allah is God, Allah is God, but he won't be able to do it. The power of the Almighty will strike him and he will have to bow and proclaim that God in heaven reigneth forever and ever. I love to be there. So listen, you don't have to worry about one thing. God's going to take care of every single one of them. Those that try to attack the chosen people of Israel. Those that come against those Christians in America, around the world. Those that have martyred Christians for the sake of their religion. God's going to take care of every single one of them. Every rock star that would get up and want devil horns implanted in their head. Every one of them just parade around half naked proclaiming that Satan is God. Satan is God. No, I'm telling you, every single one of them will bow to the God of heaven and proclaim that he is Lord. And you know what? You're going to too. Every one of us. Every one of us. The question is, will it be your first time or your second? I hope it will be your second. Because if it's your second, that means you've already bowed once. And asked him into your heart to be your Savior. But if you've never done that, we're asking you to do tonight what you're going to do anyway. We're asking you to come and accept the Lord Jesus Christ because in that day, if you're a child of God, you won't have to be forced to the ground. I believe, Rose, as soon as I get there, I'll hit my knees. I'll hit my knees. I don't know what I'll do. I don't know if I'll dance or scream or cry. I don't know. I know, I know what I'll do. One thing, though, I'll say holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We need to trust in him. We need to rely in him. And we need to rejoice. Do you believe Jesus is coming? Amen. Two things you need to do waiting on him to come back. Rejoice and rely. He's in control. He still reigns. Songwriter put it like this. This old world's in such confusion. Hearts are failing everywhere. And sometimes it seems like God just doesn't care. 
But don't you fear, for he holds all of our future. So let all heaven and earth proclaim, he still reigns. He still reigns. And in the closing moments of the program today, let me take this opportunity to thank you for giving your time and coming together with us to worship. I do ask one thing from you as we leave the air today. Please let your friends, your family, your neighbors know about the broadcast, especially those that are shut in because we want to be a help and an encouragement to them. This is not like being able to go to church. I know how much many of you that are shut in, how you miss your home church, but we're glad that maybe we can at least be a little help to you during the difficult time in your life and the struggles in your life. God loves you and so do we. So I hope that you'll be praying for this ministry and let others know as well. Maybe you could even request prayer for outreach in your regular church services. It would mean so much to us. Thank you until next week at this same time. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.